college supper in London in 1980, not long after Ian Curtis died. A fellow student and I went to a poetry group we read about in Time Out. It was called the Worthless Words Workshop. When we arrived there, a dozen or so fellows were there, sitting around a conference table, waiting to share poetry. The first man read his poem. It was a very nice poem. When he had finished, the woman who came with me, captured the way to my home university, who was studying to be a TV reporter, began a poetic critique along the lines of those American grad school English seminars. A deathly silence ensued. Soon, we realized the truth of things. This was to be poetry without judgment, without criticism. We all sat and listened to poems, mostly pre-verse, across a universe of themes, across a spectrum of talent. The words themselves were indeed worthless. What mattered was the experience of the reader and of the listener, the deep side awe of things. Nobody worried who was a big dog in the room. There was virtually no structure. We transcended race, nationality, gender, even class. We just read poems. We just read poems. I recall a few of the poems still. One used a bicycle as a metaphor for ritualistic worship of God. I can see the poet imitating the spokes with his arms, and then imagining the bike wheel as a bishop's mitre. My fellow Arkansan read a poem in which she used a sandy beach, bread and cheese to symbolize an erotic event, although I frankly didn't get the image until everyone started nodding and singing, winking sort of comments. We confessed to those there that their English and Irish and Jamaican accents made the poems far more exotic and wonderful to us than they otherwise might be, while the regular said the same about our odd Arkansas accents. We went to a few meetings this week. I wrote a lot of poems that summer, a few of which I like, many of which I meant to read. I've written hundreds more since, published a few, but went to read most of them. But those unseasonably cool summer evenings, in conference rooms that have seen far better days, seated with people that, in the main, were and are as unknown as I am, and will eternally be, those days taught me more about poetry and the life within than a thousand anthologies could. I believe in poetry without judgment, without money, without criticism, and with no more reaction than a polite, this works for me, or failing that, a silent smile. Don't pass out prizes, don't vote on favorites, don't set up slams, don't mail out any direct notes of rejection, don't create poet laureates. No returns, document 